In the last video, we understood that choosing the optimal laser wavelength can avoid fluorescence effect. However, there are more factors that influence our laser selection. Let's have a quick tour. Do you remember why is the sky blue? In our first video, we showed that the efficiency of the scattering process is inversely proportional to the false power of wavelength. This means that the shorter the wavelength, the stronger the scattering effect. In other words, the laser wavelength plays a key role in the sensitivity of our Raman experiment, and a laser of shorter wavelengths can provide us with much more Raman signal. But as stated, photons with shorter wavelengths have more energy and are therefore more likely to excite unwanted fluorescence. For this reason, violet or UV lasers are rarely used in Raman experiments. But even if you choose a longer excitation wavelength, there is more to consider, such as detector sensitivity. The Euro CCD detector can only detect the Raman peak below 1100 nanometer. That means a laser wavelength beyond 900 nanometer will need an infrared detector. However, these in-gas detectors typically process only 10% of CCD's sensitivity. Still, Researchers apply 1064 nanometer lasers for strong fluorescing samples, sacrificing sensitivity and measurement speed, because they cannot be analyzed with any visible laser. But again, things get more complicated as sample heating must also be considered. Although Raman spectroscopy is often advertised as a non-invasive analytical technique, this is not always the case. In the laser focus, the heat may darken or even burn solid samples or vaporize the liquid sample. Longer wavelengths tend to heat samples stronger. Generally, if that happens, we must use less laser power, which leads to lower sensitivity once more. Consequently, considering all these factors, most regular Raman measurements use lasers in the range of 450 nm to 800 nm and the two most widely used are 532 nm green laser and 785 near-infrared laser. In the next video, we will talk about how to choose lasers for a Raman device.